Hi. There are lots of books on Wicca out there and more and more every day. Unfortunately, a lot of them are rather superficial. They introduce you to the same things over and over again. Very few of them go into great depth. However, it's odd to think that some of the older books actually go into more depth than the newer ones. So what I'm going to be doing today is talking about some of the older books that will give you a better idea of where Wicca comes from and even more so give you a better idea of how to train yourself and how to perform rituals and what it all means. I'll be giving the titles and authors of the book in the description so you can look them up for yourself. Wicca started with Gerald Gardner's system, of course. The person that he initiated who brought Wicca to the United States was Raymond Buckland. The first of the books I would want to recommend here is Buckland's Complete Book of Witchcraft. It's got 15, page, 15 chapters on various topics, healing, magic, herbalism, rites of passage, and so on. Each of them has discussions, and more important, it has exercises you can do that will increase your understanding of each of these topics and uh, will also develop your skills at those. One thing to warn you about, however, is that in the first chapter he discusses the history of Wicca and he apparently is still believing in the idea that Wicca goes back to the Stone Age when it's been shown quite conclusively that it's a much more recent religion. With that aside, I think this may very well be the, the best book for a modern Wiccan who wants to deepen their religion to use. This is a rather older one. It's actually a rather old edition of it, in fact. It's called What Witches Do. I actually got a copy of this signed by the author, Stuart Fowler, and he commented that he hadn't seen this particular edition in a while, so I was just very fortunate to get it because it's hardcover. And this was probably the first book that I ever read on Wicca, and this was the edition that I used. It's about Alexandrian Wicca, which is essentially Gardnerian Wicca. He was a newspaper reporter who w was doing a story on Wicca, and after he worked with, with Alexanders, the founder of Alexandrian Wicca, for a while, he realized that he wanted to become a Wiccan, and that was the best way to actually write about it. So he joined up and was initiated. The book contains a lot of ritual material, discusses the rituals in great depth, and just gives a good overall view of what Gardnerian Wicca was originally like via Alexandrian Wicca. It uh, treats the various mysteries pretty well. Uh, but there's a chapter on the Great Rite, for instance, and that's something that is generally left out of modern Wicca, which is unfortunate because it really is at the root of what Wicca is all about. And he discusses that in fairly good detail. Stuart Farrer later on <clears throat> got married to another Wiccan, Janet, and the two of them wrote a number of books together. These next two books I bought separately when they first came out. They've been republished as a single volume. One of them is called Eight Sabbaths for Witches, and the other is The Witch's Way. They've been republished in a single book called A Witch's Bible. These are highly recommended. They have a lot of very good ritual material in them. There's a lot of theology in them, which is very uncommon in most Wiccan books. Uh, it explains a lot more about why Wiccans do what they do. The section from The Witch's Way, it's subtitled Principles, Rituals, and Beliefs of Modern Witchcraft, includes a lot of material from the original Gardnerian Book of Shadows, which, of course, hasn't been published before. They have a lot of information with uh, where they talked with Doreen Valiente, who was one of the founders of Wicca, and she gives her view of the way things are. Uh, this includes a number of rituals, drawing down the sun, three goddesses ritual, right of the 13 megaliths, rituals of protection, Sishisor ritual, and then it goes into a combination of theology and 
practical information. For instance, a, a chapter called The Rationale of Witchcraft and another one called On Running a Coven. In the first book here, it has your basic cast a cir circle casting ritual, drawing down the moon, etc. These two together would enable you to set up your own group that follows an essentially Alexandrian slash Gardnerian way, especially if you add in what witches do. They are a little more apt to believe in the antiquity of Wicca, although not necessarily into the Stone Age. They seem to think that Gerald Gardner at least worked with a uh, pre-Wiccan group that was actually a witchcraft group. So you have to keep that in mind. But other than that, it's a great collection of information about the history of Wicca, about rituals of Wicca, and about theology. The next two are ones that were the, the books that pretty much changed Wicca into um, a more modern form, which I always refer to as Neo-Wicca, away from the initiatory system that the, uh, rep the Alexanders and the Gardnerians represent and into more a do-what-you-want what religion. Uh, the first one is Starhawk, the Spiral Dance. This is a, also an old edition of it, so if you buy it, it'll be, it'll be looking different. This one I actually bought on the first day it came out. It's subtitled, A Rebirth of the Ancient Religion of the Great Goddess, and as that implies, her version of Wicca is fairly goddess-centric, although she does include the god. A good example of her goddess-centric aspect is that when she gives her version of the charge of the goddess, she's just left out every line that mentions the word he in it, or man. However, the book has a lot of good exercises, meditations, and that sort of a thing, and a large number of prayers, chants, and other ritual material that's a, a very different kind from most of what you'll see in other books. The other book is the one that probably most caused the eruption of Wicca and into the whole idea of uh, the do-what-you-want kind of Wicca. So I have somewhat negative feelings towards it, but you, you do need to read it. Uh, it's called Wicca, A Guide for the Solitary Practitioner, and it's by Scott Cunningham. This was really the first book to come out that talked about how you could perf perform Wiccan things as an individual, self-initiation, for instance, um, adapting the rituals which in the Gardnerian Wicca were meant for groups into ones that could be used by individuals. For that reason, it's interesting to, to see how you, how you can do that, how you can change a group re, uh, religion into an individual religion. Be careful, though, it's, it's watered Wicca down somewhat. And in fact, I think uh, modern Wicca, the Neo-Wicca, has removed a lot of the mystery, a lot of the depth. Um, it's a lot more of a surface treatment. So you need this, but I recommend the other books as well for developing, developing your own spiritual life in, in a truly mystery religion way. The last two books I'm going to be talking about are more about the, the context of Wicca, you might say. Um, it, they're not so much how to do Wicca as they are what is Wicca all about, where does it fit in, where does it come from. Uh, the first one here is Drawing Down the Moon by Margot Adler. It's subtitled Witches, Druids, Goddess Worshippers, and Other Pagans in America Today. It's a summary of the different forms of neo-paganism in America at the time that she, that she wrote. Unfortunately, she did re die a few years ago. A couple, among uh, the other religions besides Wicca includes Druids and Asatru and a few other um, traditions. So it's a good idea to read this if you want to see where Wicca fits in and give you an idea of the breadth of the religion. The second one is a little more technical. It's called The Triumph of the Moon, a modern, uh, sorry, The Triumph of the Moon, A History of Modern Pagan Witchcraft by Ronald Hutton. Ronald Hutton is a professional historian and this book is a history book. Um, some people find it a little difficult to read. Uh, my personal opinion is that it, it's absolutely gripping and reads almost like a 
detective novel. He's trying to track down the, where Wicca came from, and you know, was it an ancient religion? What what were its sources if it weren't? And it's almost like a the sort of mystery novel where a door keeps closing to possible solutions until the intrepid detective finds there's only one possible explanation. So to me, I find it a very exciting book. Um, some people find it a little more difficult. It's specifically about where Gardnerian Wicca came from, but of course, modern Wicca comes from Gardnerian Wicca. And so he's dealing with, did it go back to the Stone Age? Was there even a pre-Gardner tradition of Wicca? It's a nice corrective to some of these other books, like uh, the Buckland book that talks about Wicca as, as being ancient. There is one other book, unfortunately I don't have it with me right now, but uh, it's worth reading part of, and it's The Blue Equinox by Aleister Crowley. It's um, a publication of a, a journal that he wrote, and it includes a number of articles and some ritual material in it. Most of it isn't really that um, relevant to most Wiccans, but there are two in there that are, are very important. One is a ritual, uh, the Gnostic Mass. A lot of that ritual made its way into the Great Rite Ritual of Wicca, so it's worth reading. Uh, the other one is called The Law of Liberty, and that one's very interesting. Most of the quotations from Crowley that made their way into the Charge of the Goddess, especially the version that Gardner wrote, it was later revised by Valiente into the version we know now. Yeah, I have a study of that on my website. I'll give a link to that in the description as well. Most of them come from this, this particular source, but more important is the theology in it. Crowley's system had these three spiritual beings, Nuit, Hadi, and Rahuhuit. Rahuhuit uh, was the crown conquering child that was the lord of this aeon, but Nuit and Hadi are very interesting from a wicked point of view. Nuit is the closest that Crowley would come to the goddess and Hadi the closest he would come to the god. And if you read The Law of Liberty, you'll discover there's an awful lot in there that could be adapted into Wicca, and it probably was a very influential source for Gardner developing his own theology. It's still useful today, and I think it will deepen your understanding of the god and goddess to read it. So I highly recommend that. There's a link to an online version of it in the description. So it's difficult to find a book and this way you get it for free as well. So those are books that I consider classic books in Wicca that I really think modern Wiccans should be more familiar with. There will still be plenty of new Wiccan books coming out but these ones I think will give you a much better grounding in what Wicca is all about and what it could be and what it could mean for you than a lot of the more recent books. Alright, then those are my recommended books. Thank you and goodbye.